Hey, coming up we have Real Dirt, a rapper from South City. And we also got the headlines with Russell Morris talking about Ooh. girls hollering back. And last but not least, we got some stories from our sister publication, Silicon Valley Debug. Up next on Yo TV. Yo. Oh boy, yeah, we Yo TV, we back here. New culture, new voices, new power coming at you. What's happening? We Yo TV out here. Before we go any further, I have to pick up the magazine. You got one. Good morning, YoTV. I'm your host, Anne. And I'm Donnie. And we here are playing over uh, in San Francisco at one of these hidden pier areas. <laughs> and um, they have all the floats here for the Chinese parade. It's going to be going on later on today. And I'm pretty excited. We get to see it before yeah. you guys do. Well, we're giving you a sneak peek, I guess. <laughs> and uh, another sneak peek for you. We got a rapper, Real Dirt. He is coming out of South City, the 650. And 650? <laughs> Holler. And he's talking about, I don't know, like getting hypey and making good songs with people like the Black Eyed or Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas. And um, I think you're going to want to meet him. So go ahead and check it out up next for you on Yo TV. Yeah, man, it's your boy Rel Dirt right here, man. You know what it is, South City Beast. You know, I'm just chilling right here in CTDC Studios, you know what I mean? Right now, you know what I mean? We just talk, checking out my album. You know what I mean? It's done. March 6th, dropping every song that's from the Bay. All the hot dudes that's out right now from the Bay that's doing songs, you know what I mean? You always hear people shouting out 415, 707, 510. You know what I mean? You'll never hear 650. We right here with South City ain't, ain't, ain't Bay. We here, man. We hood. We do it, man. South City, is. I've been there for ridiculous long. You know what I mean? That's the block Cypress Ave, you know what I mean? We get it popping. It's crazy down there, man. You can see a bunch of black dudes hanging with a bunch of Mexican dudes. You feel me? And it's good. You know what I mean? All my people out there show me so much love. and It's just a great place, you know what I mean? And it's important for me to do that. And I got the opportunity to do it best with an album. Uh, I got a lot of people on there, you know. Uh, Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas, San Quinn, Keek the Sneak, FAB. It's a lot of heat bangers on there, man. So it's a must grab. You know what I mean? I also got the video you can check out on YouTube. What's up, y'all? This is your boy TV, representing for that CTDC Records. Coming straight out the bay on that 650 side, South City, San Bruno. You know, we represent that, but we all about the whole bay, this whole movement. You know, we're making this happen. So. Sly, the Sly Show mixtape. But the Sly Show and CTDC Records presents the Dirty Work mixtape that's going to be out February 15th. You know, I mean, what's going to separate her from other mixtapes is that Sly is going to do, if you don't know who Sly is, you need to you gotta find out. You got to check it out, man. You need to find out. It's going to have him doing like prank calls on here, just Sly being Sly Tom. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's what's going to make it unique because it's not just like a DJ mixing in to the next song. I mean, it's going to have that too. Of course, he's a DJ as well, but it's him, you know, his personality over the mixtape. Which... Yeah, you can say you can say it's, it's it's some hyphy joints on there, but I I don't like to put myself in that category. You know what I mean? Like I mean, I'm I'm with the hyphy movement and all that, but I'm, I just it's just a different sound. You feel me? It's it's me. So I feel like that my delivery is real irregular, and I bring it, man. I bring it all day. I go hard. I have to. I got I got the label. This was you know I mean these were my first tattoos. Nothing too major. I mean. So the, you know what I mean, so I'm looking a little, looks a little funny because I'm naked, you know what I mean? Like, I need something else there, but when it, when it's all official, like, yeah, this is it, yeah, I'm gonna just go nuts and get everything, you know what I mean? Want to stay up to date on what goes on with ethnic and youth media? Visit the New America Media Bookstore. You will find writing and art from homeless youth, literary journals from the Mian community, DVD on mental health advocacy, and much more. 
You can even subscribe to any of our youth publications or New America Media's directory of over 2,000 ethnic print, online, and broadcast media. For more information, visit www.newamericamedia.org and click Bookstore. Get your Sprawl! Sprawl Magazine is a quarterly publication dedicated to giving much-needed representation to the many diverse groups throughout Northern California and beyond. Get your Sprawl! Sprawl Magazine covers the events and stories that youth want to hear about, such as employer rights, political awareness, our friends and family coming home from war, and cool new artists such as Amy Malkoff, The Secret Sons, Gavin Freitas, and Sarah Ramos. Get your sprawl on! In giving a voice to our often misunderstood community, we break the molds, tear down the stereotypes, and empower a fast-growing population. So get your sprawl on! Now available for participating schools, or log on now at sprawlmagazine.com. Block Report is a radio show where we document and bring up a lot of the issues affecting the black community. Who's all here to decolonize the mind today? Who's all here for revolution? I'm calling the police. I want the FBI to arrest me. Trying to get us frustrated, you be frustrated before you know. His family sued the federal government because of MK Ultra and his murder. Right there, you know what I'm saying? And if you think that conspiracy hysteria, I quit a doctor on the stool of America. Get that monkey off your back. Get that monkey off your back. Get that monkey off your back, boy. Get that monkey off your back, girl. Step up to the mic, San Rafael's hottest new youth center. Only at the mic can you learn to make your own movies, record your own CD, or learn to cook amazing cuisine. Contact 415-459-6884 or just stop by at 1115 3rd Street in downtown San Rafael. The Pitt River Nation up near Manchester is currently uh, trying to protest against the Calpine Corporation, which is an energy company. They protested down in San Jose uh, recently to fight off this building of a power plant on their sacred land. So thanks to Debug down in Silicon Valley, they bring you this story. I'm next for you on your TV. The Pitt River Nation and uh Northern, far up Northern California by Mount Shasta, we have a lake, it's called the Medicine Lake Highlands and it's been a sacred uh, area since forever. And it, it's actually our healing waters that our people have used to heal and uh, Calpines is trying to build a geothermal energy uh, reserve there in which they're going to uh, add chemicals into the plates to get natural reactions. And in the process, they're going to destroy a very sacred place. Well, how do you feel about that, though? I mean, like, well, two words, two, yeah, two words. words. What's up, bro? Spirit, that, spiritual genocide. Corporation who wants to build this uh, power plants right in this really beautiful, very sacred place to the native people who've lived there forever. Yeah. And so we're all here to tell Calpine, give it up. You're not building this thing. Calpine just lost in court, and so tribe members today are calling on Calpine to not appeal. That's them being outside all this morning. Uh, that's fine. Everybody's allowed their views. Unfortunately, we take a neutral stance in these things. We're just building management here, just yeah. making sure all the traffic flow goes in and out of the building. Oh, okay, make sure okay. it's a peaceful demonstration, which oh. by all means it has been. Jimmy Sunwe. My name is Mark Lebeau. I'm a citizen of the Pit River Nation. I'm also an advocate for the protection of sacred sites. We're gathered here today to send Calpine Energy Corporation a message. That message is to cease and desist the building of geothermal power plants in the sacred Medicine Lake Highlands. We hereby evict Calpine. Dear Robert P. May, Calpine CEO, over decades, Calpine has continued to cause harm to the sacred Medicine Lake Highlands. Your refusal to comply with the demands of the native and local community is in violation of your own quote unquote commitment to the highest ethical standards. 
Calpine Energy Corporation, you have lost your lease extension through the decision of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in November 2006. Therefore, Calpine Energy Corporation, we demand that you immediately the American people you know, are sick and tired of um, you know, energy companies, uh, you know, those corporations that um, you know, you know, are able to, to, to bend the ear of the federal government and get favors. I believe the American people are tired of having to pay um, you know, their hard-earned dollars you know, to support. Uh, Calpine proposes to drill for geothermal energy that will unearth mercury, arsenic, and other uh, material, minerals, heavy metals that are known to cause cancer. Uh, out of the, the spring-fed mountains of uh, Medicine Lake, uh, that water flows into Fall River, and then into Pitt River, and then into the Sacramento River, and winds up in the South San Francisco Bay. We're talking about uh, hundreds of tons of, of mercury, a lot of arsenic uh, in the highlands, and they're put there for a purpose. You know, they're put there to, as an indicator to people, you know, to not not dig that deep into the earth. Um, you know, clearly, I mean, that that is a message in and of itself. So that's a message. Um, the eviction notice today, you know, that's another message. We're going to continue to to send those types of messages to Calpine Energy Corporation. You know, this is just a taste. You know, we were here last year at this time. We had over 300 people here in protest. We're here again. We'll be here tomorrow. We'll be here forevermore as long as it takes, you know, to protect our sacred medicine lake uh, you know, forever. If you just like that clip, um, go to debug, siliconvalleydebug.com. You can see more stuff like that. And I'm next. I'm going to be in the dragon. I don't know how I'm getting in there, but I'm going to try. I'm going to be inside the dragon next, so... Stay tuned. All right, Yo TV, we are hanging out in the secret spots over off of Pier 27. Um, and this is where all the floats are for the Chinese parade going on later today. And we are also here with Kendra, and she takes care of these floats. So can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? I take care of five of these floats. Studio Concepts builds five floats for this parade. We're based in Portland, Oregon, but we bring them down here by truck, and they're all decorated here and assembled here. Um, with wonderful sponsors, Bank of America, Singular, Cafe Pacific and Ford are all here ready for us to build. Cool, I've been seeing on the glitter on the floor. I love it. It's very decorative. <laughs> we love a glitter parade. There's lots in this parade. Every float has glitter. So what is the special animal for this Chinese New Year? We are in the year of the pig, going into the year of the pig. So almost every float represents it in some way. Oh man, hopefully we can save like piggy banks and things like that. So, well, thank you very much for taking us here. And we're going to show you what's around here, Yo TV. up next. Oh wait, first we're going to bring it back to Donnie because he's going to tell you what's coming up next on Yo TV too. Hey, thanks, and throwing it back to me. I'm in the dragon right now. Next up, we have Russell talking about a basketball player who recently came out being gay. He has a, a book coming out. And he's also talking about girls taking pictures of guys on camera phones and putting them on websites all over the country. They're sprouting up. Next up on your TV. Here are the headlines from the New Youth Majority and the World According to Me. Russell Morris. Ex-NBA player publicly comes out of the closet in the Associated Press. The small exclusive club of openly gay professional male athletes has a new member. Former NBA center John Amici who spent five seasons with four teams, on Wednesday became the first NBA player to publicly come out. His admission comes three years after his playing career ended, making him the sixth professional male athlete from one of the four major U.S. sports, basketball, baseball, football, hockey, to openly discuss his homosexuality. This is an encouraging development, but it's a little astonishing that it's come so late. The thing that shocks me is that only six men in all the professional sports have come out. I'm assuming that figure skating is not one of the sports they're considering. This is a significant move by a brave man and I commend him for it. I just wish it still wasn't newsworthy. I mean, if America can accept Kevin Federline, a straight backup dancer, surely we can acknowledge gay athletes. But that's just a thought. Webb gives women revenge. Cat call recipients share their stories and men's photos. From the San Francisco Chronicle. A new generation of female bloggers, armed with camera phones, has started an internet site to post pictures and videos of guys who harass them in public. Under the motto, if you can't slap them, snap them, 
Hollow back is based on the same sort of camera phone vigilantism that has been used to shame bad drivers, litter bugs, and rude sales clerks. In September, San Francisco joined more than a dozen other cities and states that have hollow back blogs. Women fill the sites with pictures of men they say verbally and sometimes physically harass them on the street. Isn't that just great? As if MySpace wasn't causing enough romantic woe for philandering men, now we have to contend with this nonsense. I must say though that I don't think I'll hesitate the next time I say something cleverly raunchy to an attractive stranger. Instead, I'll feel the pressure to be particularly witty or offensive because now I might be documented. At this point, it's a competition. Admittedly, there is a line, and I know that what I might find hilarious can be obnoxious. But here's what these women are considering. However annoying it might be to publicly acknowledge as attractive, imagine the feeling of never being looked at. Maybe that's what piggish men can do in response. Start a website with photographs of plain women not worth saying hi to on the street. Now we're gonna go to commercial break. Uh, for, for more ethnic media, go to youthoutlook.org. I am the dragon. As fast as I can write, these thoughts are running through my mind. Today I, I saw the sadness in the eyes of 14 again. girls. They were in the girls' unit for various reasons, but their expressions were all the same. Confused, lost, the positive thing of being in the halls was, was that I started to make yeah. use of my the time, time doing what my name is, and then start an intelligent conversation. To me, an intelligent conversation is talking about things that I want to look to rain, wash away the pain I have, wash away my past, most importantly, wash away the names they have labeled me. Never do I want to be labeled as a warrior, a convict, a detainee, or a danger to society. All right, up next for you, we have a story from Debug. They talked to Cherise Domingo. She is a photographer and also a community activist, and she's been documenting uh, the uprising gun violence that's been going on EPA, East Palo Alto. And uh, I mean, like 20 people got shot. That one kid who was like 13 got shot, died from the drive-by, so just a lot of crazy stuff. So she helped to come up with different uh, like solutions in order to help the community rise above the violence. So up next for you on Yo TV, go ahead and check it out. In East Palo Alto this year, there has already been over 20 people shot in this small city of just 32,000. Six people, five of them youth, have been killed in this surge of gun violence. Police say this year is reporting the worst case of violence since 1992, when East Palo Alto was known as the homicide capital of the country. Photographer and community organizer Sharice Domingo has captured the fears, hopes, and fighting spirit that exist in the streets, homes, and dreams of the people of East Palo Alto as they survive and strive in a city that is being ripped apart by bullets. Her black and white photo essay is entitled, To Live and Fight in East Palo Alto. I've lived in East Palo Alto since 1994, and then I've worked and lived there since then, and now I continue to just work in the community. So I've been part of the community for 13 years. I work with a youth organization called Yuka Yutinaya for Community Action, and I work with high school youth um, to shut down a toxic waste plant and also try to get a grocery store into the community. Um, I've done photography since mm, around 94, around there, and I've been um, doing documentary style photography. Um, as a photographer, I've never really taken photos of East Palo Alto as much because I've realized that as I, um, as I carry a camera around, my relationship to people changes because um, I walk down the street one day and people say hi or whatever. The day I walk with a camera, people are kind of more guarded. The last, um, the last four weeks or six weeks that's been going on in these parts, I decided to just start walking around with a camera and tell stories. I, I, don't, I don't know what the root of the violence is 
right now. I could say in 92 that what was going on was that there were, um, there were a lot of drugs in the community. Um, also, there were people whose bodies were just getting dumped in the community by people who, um, you know, killed outside. What's different is that there are a lot more guns in the community and it's a type of weapons that people use. You know, it's not uncommon to see people with, not to see people, but to know that, or to hear that someone's been shot because they've been shot with a semi-automatic. So this picture of Marjay um, is, she, Marjay is, she's a young person with the organization Yuka and she's always the most excited about outreaching and talking to people um, on the street and stuff. And one, during the two weeks that this happened, she came in one day and she said, you know, my grandma, my grandma wants to tell you that she loves Yuka, she loves organization, but she can't let me come here because she won't let me walk down the street. She lives um, about a quarter of a mile away from Yuka. So one of the days we said, well, we need to go you know, outreaching, so you need to stay back. And she said, no, I'm not gonna because, and then she pulls out her cross and she says, I, I, um, I only do things through Christ who strengthens me. So um, that's my J. Um, these are pictures of rooftops in East Palo Alto. Um, some of the young folks I know have stories about how folks they know um, stay on top of their rooftops at night to guard their homes because you get a clear view of the street, you get a clear view of what's going on. Yeah, they, they get on the roof with their guns and guard houses. The houses. This is a photo of um, the grandma of one of the the youth that I know and her newborn grandson um, who's only I believe two two months at, or maybe a month at this photograph. Um, I took this photo because um, it's so because of her closeness to the window because um, it's a lot of homes right now and when, when people do a lot of shootings it's in front of homes it's just bold like that and it used to be that um, that was almost the uh, the protection. Like if you have a grandma or a kid at home, the code was just don't do it at home because you could hurt people. You could hurt the grandma or innocent lives. Um, this is a picture of my friend Nada, who in October she was shot in the face while crossing her street. Um, she she was crossing her street to go home, and she was like feet away from her doorsteps when she was shot, um, and she, she, it went through, I believe her cheek and then came out her spine and it narrowly missed her. So she, she wasn't, she didn't end up paralyzed, but she actually, there was a point where they, she had actually died and they had to revive her. Um, a guy I know said that he moved out of East Palto because he doesn't want to end up in anybody's t-shirt. Out with us, uh, check us out at youthoutlook.org, email us, you know, things like that. <laughs> uh, yes, at GoTV at youthoutlook.org. <laughs> and uh, we got a bunch of new footage up on the website for you, the articles, the clips, the iPods, webcasts, all that good stuff you can check out. And don't forget to tour up and down Market Street, go to Chinatown and follow these clips. Find the dragon, I might be in there. I don't know yet, <laughs> I might be in the dragon there. He Wait. was having fun up there. It was pretty scary, <laughs> it's a though. Good time. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week. See ya. See ya. It's fun out now. I'm just gonna move it back past the scene here so you don't die. Oh, okay. Coming. Watch behind you. Go All right. All right. So now. I'm in the dragon float, controlling the dragon. I'm the dragon master. The master right now. It's the best thing ever. We're friends.